Hello, hello, good day. Um, my name's Chad and I just wanted to share this bit of a project I've been working on for the last, uh, I don't know, it's been a month, just kind of as I've had time in and out to be able to work on this. Uh, it, basically what I wanted to do was, so I have the Panasonic DPUB420. Uh, 4k blu-ray player and I got this actually I didn't even buy it new I bought it like unopened in the box for like a really good price a little while back and I've been using it as my primary blu-ray player uh, for four uh, for 4k videos and stuff um, you may have seen in one of my previous videos I kind of did a similar thing that what I'm going to talk about here where I took the guts of that and I put it inside of an old Denon blu-ray player which is just like a nicer looking enclosure and stuff um, and yeah, that worked out okay for a bit, but it was, it was a little hacky. It wasn't really refined as much. And I didn't really like the Denon enclosure as much as it had kind of like a plastic front on it still. And the display didn't light up or anything like that. But anyway, so it was a step up, I think. And, uh, so I thought I'd do something better. Um, I actually found... And this is pretty cool because I found it in the electronic recycling bin, but I found a Super Audio CD player from, from Marantz, a Super Audio CD slash DVD slash CD player. So really nice player, very nice build quality, uh, solid aluminum, uh, brushed aluminum face uh, and buttons. And uh, yeah, just, just a beautiful looking player, uh, but it wasn't reading discs. So I went through the time to try to fix it and uh, got a new laser assembly, put that in, still wasn't reading the discs. Okay, it sat for a little bit, you know, and kind of eventually over time, I'm like, you know what, why don't I try the same thing and try to basically build uh, a Marantz really nice looking uh, 4K player. And so that's exactly what I did. And so my idea with this one that was different was I would get um, I would get the front display working as well, the vacuum fluorescent display, uh, and uh, I also wanted to get the transport buttons working. Um, so I'm not totally done with this project yet, but it's kind of at a place where it's complete enough, and I've been using it to show it to you. So that's what I wanted to do. Uh, so here's the player. So yeah, there it is. Glorious looking player. It has really, really built well. This is this is nice thick aluminum here. This very uh, solid chassis. The bottom, the the top plate, and everything. It's it's very weighty. <laughs> and you'll notice uh, it actually says Marantz 4K here. And true. And just as I said inside is the Panasonic 4K player with all the beautiful processing that it provides, uh, uh, tons of options for playing your 4K Blu-rays and uh, dual HDMI outputs. So you can run uh, one off to, like in my case, I run one off to my Denon receiver here and the other one off to my projector. And you'll see here, this is the, uh, the 4K Blu-ray interface doesn't look particularly good with the, all the lights on here, but this uh, projector looks amazing, by the way. Um, but yeah, so I press the button here, and there it is. That's actually the Panasonic's uh, optical drive, uh, just mounted and mated to this. So all that this does so far is display the Marantz 4K logo like that i'm still working on uh the the software to display different uh different modes uh, whether the door is open closed uh playback time so i haven't quite sorted that stuff out yet so um let's take a look let's take a look around this thing So pulling the cables too much so you'll see i've maintained the uh the nice detachable power supply you can change the uh power cable on this if you want to to something better quality but i've got a nice nice one here and 
here you go that's all the uh input output for the 4k player uh your ethernet uh optical usb your hdmi you got the fan in there still uh wi-fi is still in here and uh take a little bit of a look inside here if i can get this open with one hand all right i got the top open here so don't judge me now all these uh cables and stuff i'm gonna tidy this up once i completely figure out all the inputs and outputs going into everything but uh just to give you a sense of what i've done so far uh i've got the original moran's power supply in here and this power supply <clears throat> provides the uh, the higher voltage needed to drive the vacuum fluorescent display on the front here. Uh, it also is powering the Arduino that I've got back here. This is not mounted yet. Like I said, the cables aren't routed nicely and managed nicely, but we'll get there. Um, and uh, here is the, uh, the Panasonic main board and its power supply and uh, a longer ribbon cable going to the uh, 4K optical drive here. Uh, this is mounted on its original chassis, which I cut down and mounted very solidly in here. Uh, and then we've got the, um, the power open close and the infrared uh, wires going to the panel here now, uh, which is how you control the, this, yeah, this power uh, there's an infrared uh, pickup there for the remote, this. So what I want to do is I don't have the transport controls on the front working yet uh, to be able to play, pause, stop, next track and all that. But what I want to do is uh, I have these front panel buttons already wired in via this ribbon cable to the Arduino here. And then what I want to do is uh, decode which button's being pressed and then send out the appropriate pulses for the infrared um, as a signal into the infrared input. So it'll simultaneously take the infrared here plus the commands for as if you were using the remote control. So therefore you could use uh, these controls and it will control this board. So that's kind of what I've done so far. Um, I did want to eliminate the Panasonic power supply. I'm not so sure I should do that yet because I wanted to use this very high quality one that came originally in the Marantz player. It provides a nice 12 volts and this only requires 12 volts. Um, but the way that it's set up, um, this would need to be turned on all the time. So you'd need a, a five volt signal to, um, to jumper this over and you keep this power supply running all the time to provide the standby 12 volts that the, that this would. And then when this one turns on, then it provides, you know, voltage back to for the button presses and everything like that. So I'm not so sure that's the way I want to go yet. And I'm not so sure. Uh, it seems like this only provides two amps of 12 volts uh, on that leg. This provides, provides many voltages on this power supply, but the 12 volt leg, uh, seems to be as much as two amps so i'm not sure if that's enough overhead to run this and i haven't been able to measure it to see how much draw there actually is because as soon as i disconnect it and put my amp meter uh in line it would not power up it seemed to be finicky about it so it works as is works wonderfully and yeah that is it that's as far as i know the world's only marantz 4k blu-ray player and in my opinion probably the most attractive one i mean there's there's oppos and the panasonic dpub 9000 um i don't think the 9000 looks as nice as this um <laughs> i mean it does say dvd and super audio cd on it you know so so there is that but uh yeah overall i just i like it very much I think it's uh, a much nicer looking device than what I originally had, just the little plastic enclosure of the 420. And uh, and it's been fun to work on and it's a continuing project that I'm enjoying. Um, yeah, just to show you here, here's the remote for it. There you go, see?
works just fine. I ordered the DPUB 9000 remote instead of this little dinky one that comes with the 420 because this is just silly and, and you accidentally hit the Netflix button and then that's just like the end of the world. So let's just put that away and we got the nice bigger uh, remote coming that's more appropriate for something like this. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching and uh, I'm sure I'll have a follow-up video as I do more on this one. Uh, yep. That's all for now. See ya.